Greetings, my name is Louise Dente and I welcome you to yet another edition of Cultural Caravan. We're here on location at the Restaurant Owners Corp located at 13205 Merrick Boulevard here in Jamaica, Queens. And we're joined by Mr. Raymond Duguay. He is the High Chancellor and the second Assistant President General of the UNIA. We're going, he's going to join us for a very informative conversation. Are you ready? Well, I am. Let's go. We're now joined by the second Assistant President General and High Chancellor of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, also known as UNIA, and the African Communities League, Mr. Raymond Duguay. Welcome to Cultural Caravan. Oh, thank you for having me. Well, it's always a pleasure. And you know, in our last conversation, we talked about the legacy of the great uh, Marcus Messiah Garvey, the founder of and the first president general of this mighty organization. And then his successor, a person who also took the philosophy of the great Marcus Messiah Garvey, uh, Mr. Carlos Cooks, mm -hmm. and took it on another level and formed another organization that also inspired many people. Now let's talk about in UNIA today. Okay. Um, currently, when you and the President General visited us about a year plus, you talked about the legacy of the Honorable Marcus Garvey, and you talked about some of the things that you were planning to do. One of them is you had just opened up a, um, a, a store, uh, not a store, but a, a business in our community in Jamaica, Queens, known as The Rock. Tell us what The Rock is and what, and then I want you to talk to us about some of the other projects going forward. Okay, The Rock, uh, it's, really, it's really the FACA Rock. That's the Federation of African, Caribbean, and American. That's the FACA part. And then The Rock, ROC, is the Restaurant Owners Corp. Basically, what we've done is mimic Mr. Garvey and the Black Star Line Steamship Corporation. How did we do that? Before I give you the, the story, just understand these numbers. Uh, 1919, 1920, Mr. Garvey sold his shares of the Black Star Line Steamship Corporation and the Negro Factors Corporation for $5. And you have to keep in mind, black people were making between 25 and 40 cents per day. So at most, we were making $2 per week. Uh, Mr. Garvey charged $5 per share in 1919. Well, we used a 5% cost of living adjustment. Using that, that $5 in 1919, in 2017, is worth $600. So this is just to show to you, we didn't even do anything different. All we did was follow Mr. Garvey. Okay, how did now, that, you know, we charge $600 per share? We're able to raise $1.6 million uh, dollars from our people. The Rock is a warehouse. It is 15,000 square feet. It has all the dry goods, fish, meats, produce, and vegetables that we use, that basically restaurants use, but everything a restaurant uses, we use. In fact, we actually, as of, as of uh, the end of last year, we actually, or when I mean last year, I mean 2018, beginning of 2019, we established a bakery at the right. So now we produce our own baked goods, all the gizada, all of the black cake, rum cake, all the upside down apple cake, everything you can imagine we produce on site. Anyway, how did we come up with this restaurant on his co-op? Well, in New York City, and when we say New York City, we're really talking Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, uh, Maybe Manhattan, but not really Staten Island. You know, just the, the three major counties that we're heavily involved in. Black restaurants that are in business in, in New York City, in those three counties, spend between eight and $20,000 per week on dry goods, fish, meats, produce, and vegetables. We're not talking salaries. We're not talking rentals. We're just talking food items, just food. So, you know, I'm a mathematician, and I like to use round numbers, low, uh, the lower range. So I said, let's, let's assume $10,000 per week. $10,000 per week, and if you can identify 100 restaurants, that's a million dollars a week, times 52 weeks in a year. That's $52 million that those 100 black restaurants spend on dry goods, meats, fish, produce, and vegetables. I've got two questions. Number one is, 
where are these restaurants getting these monies from? And the answer is us. Because black restaurants are exclusively patronized by black people. And number two is who is providing all of these dry goods, fish, meats, produce, and vegetables to these black restaurants? The answer to that is not us. I don't have to tell you, and this, this, is, this is not a mystery, this is nothing new, that we don't control anything, even black restaurants that we own. So we said, we said to ourselves, what would the Honorable Marcus Mosario Garvey do? Would he create a group to demonstrate and protest and denounce the system? Or would he pull our resources together, start a corporation, charge a share, raise the capita, go out and buy or lease a warehouse, go out and buy the bulk in food, reducing the cost, and then share it and regenerate it back to the community. This way, we create jobs, we create employment, but more importantly, we uplift ourselves. We now can see when you enter The Rock, which is, by the way, located at 13205 Merrick Boulevard. Again, 13205 Merrick Boulevard inside of Belknap Street in Jamaica, Queens. When you enter, everybody you see looks like us. The people running the forklift, the people at the cashier, the people distributing, the people buying. And let me tell you, every time I step in the rock, I feel so much pride and so much joy to see that we did it. And by the way, for your viewers, you may wonder how much debt do we have? The answer is zero. We self-financed it. We created the money. And not only that, but Look at the jobs we've created. Already, we've created 19 jobs here in New York, in Southeast Queens. But more importantly, in Jamaica, where a lot of our products come from, we created six jobs. And then, let's not forget, back home, which home? Africa, where we're from. We created jobs in Liberia, and we're trying to expand. We even attempted to uh, import rice from IET. So we are, we, there's no place that we're not going to go. And finally, as we're bringing in products, selling products, and let's not forget about the Black Farmers Association, which has been decimated, it doesn't really exist because of, because of giant places like Walmart and so forth. So our mini goal is to resurrect that because as we build, as we market, meaning, you know, we opened May 27 of 2017. As of June of 2019, we are profitable. We make mm -hmm. money outright. Mm -hmm. So we're reinvesting the profits to do more, to bring in more products, and to now that, but it's becoming a network, a marketing place, because we have a brother who had an idea of uh, um, alkaline water. He created that product, he sells it now. Mm -hmm. We have a sister who wants to do, who wants to import shea butter. She's mm -hmm. doing that now. So much, it's happening. If you want power, you've got to be innovative and creative. And that's what The Rock is providing us. Now, you've raised a point where today, at the time of this broadcast, we're talking about 2020, OK? And we reflect back and look forward, reflecting back on the history of the great Marcus Messiah Garvey and others, and how today you are actually actualizing it. Let's talk about Africa. As you know and as you've mentioned, there was a need and interest of Marcus Mosiah Garvey to make that connection to Africa, particularly Liberia. And uh, we had the pleasure of, uh, of um, through the leadership of the UNIA, to have the First Lady of the Republic of Liberia on, Claire Weah, um, and her husband, who had, at that time became in the leadership. Tell us about Liberia <laughs> now and the connection between the UNIA and Liberia. Oh, my pleasure. Okay. Let me ask you a question, ladies and gentlemen, and the viewers. Where on the planet do we black people control our destiny? Nowhere. Even in Africa, which is our homeland. They're no, they're no, in Southeast Queens, where we are now, we don't control anything. The rock is about the only thing that we do have. Even the businesses we control on some of the major thoroughfares, we don't own the buildings. You have to understand, it's going to take a lot. Anyway, Mr. Garvey realized, and he made this clear, if Edison decides to cut off the electricity in our Liberty Hall, we would go dark. And he understood that clearly, that even though he was planning, organizing, and building, you need a home base. You need a place that's independent that you can call home, and from there, once you build your home base, 
you can send people everywhere else and they will have a home base and our home base can be nowhere else but that beautiful 11 million square miles of the promised land that we call Africa. Garvey understood it clearly. We must have our base in Africa. Now, we're talking 1914, okay? Garvey arrives in the United States 1916. He starts the Black Star Line Steamship Corporation 1919, Negro Factories Corporation 1920, okay? In 1920, there were only two places on the planet black people could say, could even brag about of being free and independent. In East Africa was Ethiopia. In West Africa was Liberia. Now, let me add a caveat to that. Up until July 28, uh, 1915, IET, Haiti to you, but it's pronounced IET, was so-called independent. But after July 28, 1915, Woodrow Wilson, the 20th president of the United States, invaded and occupied IET for 19 long years. Brutality and genocide was committed. So maybe when the UNIA was established, there were three places. But around 1920, only two places on the planet that black people could say were independent and theirs. Ethiopia, East Africa, Liberia, West Africa. Between those two places, the places closest to this part of the world had to be Liberia. And plus, English was spoken in Liberia. Plus, Liberia was created as a haven for the black man. It was created so the formerly enslaved Africans in the United States could go back home to Africa, quote unquote, colonize a land. And what the US government was hoping is that they could send all of us back there to Africa. But that never materialized. And let me add, the concept of Liberia can only exist because of what happened in Saint-Domingue, we're talking IET. After 1804, when those Africans in IET had liberated and defeated the, of, uh, the yoke of colonialism and, ensl and enslavement, the powers that be, we're talking Caucasians, Europeans here, realized, whoa, we have a problem here. We're gonna have to do something or there's gonna be many more of these. So the concept of ACS, the American Colonization Society, was created. And so uh, Liberia was created for that purpose, to send back uh, our, our ancestors from the United States back to Africa. But keep in mind, those Africans that did go to Liberia, they were basically continuing the philosophy of Americanism, of white nationalism, where they exploited and denigrated and, 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 and uh, disrespected the indigenous population. But anyway, that's a different issue. That's another cause. And this is why we're so grateful to the current president of Liberia, the Honorable George Manawea, because he is indigenous native from Liberia. But anyway, Garvey understood clearly all the great things he, would, he was doing in the United States of America. Unless he had a home base and it had to be in Africa where we're from, it would all go to naught. And if ever the United States government or any powers that be European powers decided to take us out, re-enslave us, there was nobody to defend us. And that's what the concept of UNIA is. Right now, I'd like to ask your viewers, if the European Union or uh, let's say United States of America decides to put us back into chattel slavery, who on the planet can defend and protect black people? And it was the same 100 years ago, nobody. And that's what the need for the UNIA is. And so Garvey clearly understood, we must have the home base in Africa. And within Africa, it had to be Liberia. Because Liberia was created as a haven for black men and women to go back to. So for all of those reasons, Garvey clearly understood. And he negotiated with the government of Liberia, the Republic of Liberia. But you have to understand, just like the US government wouldn't allow Garvey to uh, succeed, the US government, through uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Dubois, uh, uh, worked so that Garvey could never establish a beachhead in Liberia. So this is why we're so uh, 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 fortunate that we have a government in Liberia that wants to work with us, that allows the UNIA to free fully. So the point is, we need a home base, we as black people, and that home base has to be where we're from, the continent. You need the landmass. It has to be in Africa, and in Africa, it has to be Liberia. 
What has been the response to the connection, the people of Liberia, to the connection of Africans here in the United States, connecting with them through the UNIA? Let me say, the response has been so promising, so positive. What's happened in Liberia now? You've got a government that wants to work for the people. And let me add this. You know, anytime you have a government that's working for the people, you almost know that the powers that be would oppose you. I mean, it has to be because the powers that be can only continue by their domination of those oppressed peoples. So what President Ware is doing is monumental. You know, it's called, it's a pro-poor government. It's for the people. By the way, you know, Liberia went through 14 years of civil war. And you have to understand, you know, Liberians don't produce any military weapons. They don't produce any, any military hardware or any military vehicles. So somebody is benefiting. Somebody has to encourage that. You know, the continued destruction in fighting among our people. But anyway, so because this government is so committed to helping its people, it's going to have enemies, those within and those without. And because of that, they understand that we are in the same battle with them. So they've opened up their hearts to us. And what's been the reaction? The people in Liberia, let me say this, they are overjoyed. I mean, they couldn't believe that Liberia was so critical and key to the UNIA. We had our international convention uh, in August in Liberia. Everywhere we went, it was like we were rock stars. You'll forgive me using that term. Mm -hmm. But they couldn't understand. Now they understood why Liberia is so critical and why all the stars are aligned. I mean, just to think, our president general is related to the leadership of Liberia. And they understand the work that we're doing. And so we're right now in the phases of creating factories in Liberia. So we have the opportunity. And you know, you have to understand, uh, President Ware um, in Liberia can be president for no more than two terms of six years. So let's assume he'll be reelected. That means 12 years. After the 12 years, he has to step down. So you know, now it's favorable to us, but it's not going to be favorable forever. And this is why we travel to Africa, and this is why we're investing in Liberia to build industries, to build factories that independent of who's in control, who's in government, as long as we're providing employment, creating upliftment, creating uh, 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 necessities of life, everybody wants that. That's what everybody wants. Whether you're in the United States or Liberia, everybody would want their children to have a better life, to be able to eat. And last thing I need to say, most people don't realize that, it's like that practically all over Africa, but specifically Liberia. Everybody eats rice in Liberia. Over 90% of the rice is imported. I mean, that's ultimately, it must go through agriculture. Agriculture's got to be the base, and that's what we're, that's what we're investing in. So all of these things are in play, and we just are so excited. And this is why we travel back to Liberia and Africa. You know, you raised a lot of points in terms of this past year being the year 2019 was the year of return. In 400 Ghana, years 400 after. 400 years. Uh, and people, lots of our people went to Africa, particularly Ghana and other places. And the fact that you built this relationship with Liberia. And so there's an interest now in people of African ancestry globally in Africa. And to come back to Africa and do it. Talk to us about some of the needs of Africa. How can we support the building of Africa? Oh, that's fine. That's easy to answer. Uh, let me say this. Uh, 2019 was 400 years after 1619. I actually went to Ghana twice uh, during 2019. And uh, we, we, as the UNIA, we uh, do trips to Africa twice a year. In fact, uh, pretty soon, in February 14th, we're going back to Africa. We're going to Ghana and then to Liberia. Uh, and then in October of 2020 of this year, uh, we'll probably be going to Kenya and um, Ken Ethiopia. But anyway, well, how can we help Africa? How can we help our brethren and our sisters on the continent? Well, 
We don't even have to go to Africa. Let's talk about right here, Southeast Queens. Let's talk about right here. Do we control our communities? Do we, what banks do we have? Uh, what buildings of higher learnings do we have? What financial institutions? All those businesses on all of the thoroughfares, the major thoroughfares in Southeast Queens, we don't own anything. So before we can even talk about going to Africa, we've got to stabilize our finances here. You know, two zeros don't make a hundred. Two zeros make a zero. You know, people think, you know, we're struggling here. And as Booker T. Washington said, cast down your bucket where you are. We're here, right here, right now in Southeast Queens. Well, our viewers can be somewhere else, but the point is, Let's build our communities here. The best thing you can do is to stabilize your finances. Now, as we're doing that, what can we do for Africa? Number one thing is agriculture. In the history of the planet, no people have ever overcome poverty, have ever overcome oppression without investing in agriculture. Agriculture is the solution to everything. Number one, you create your own food where you can eat and feed yourself. But number two, the surplus is used as trade. In fact, this is how ancient Kemet became the first global economy. This is how Ghana had a standing army of, get this, 500,000 people. I mean, they need to be paid. All of this is through agriculture. So how can we help Africa? Well, number one thing I would say is, Control your finances here. You know, if you're struggling here, you're not gonna be able to help anybody. That's number one. Number two is get involved. Join an organization. And I've got an organization for you. Join the UNIA, ACL. This is why Mr. Garvey established it. And this is why we travel to Africa because until the lion gets his historian, the hunter will continue to be glorified. You need to see for yourself. But lastly, let me say this. If Africa is the worst place on the planet, if it's the most disgusting continent there is, why is everybody going there? I mean, why is China there? Why is Europe there? Why is the Kuwaitis? Why is the Koreans? Why are the Saudis there? Why are the Israelis? If it's the worst place, why is everybody going there? They must be, they know something that we don't know. Meaning, it's the richest mineral-laden continent ever in the history of, ever in the history of the planet. So, on, and for example, President Ware and Liberia are going to need investments. Now, if we as black people don't do it, who will Liberia turn to? The same oppressors that put us in the same position. So black people, you know, and we need to continue traveling back to Africa and invest in it. But before we can do that, we need to finalize, stabilize our finances here, make sure we're in a better condition because if we're not, we can't help anybody. So Africa, like everywhere else on the planet, even before we talk about Africa, what do we need in Southeast Queens? Well, we could definitely use more jobs. We can definitely use more businesses that cater to us, the businesses that we create. We can definitely use real schools, better schools. We can have cultural centers. We can have our own television shows. You know, we can have our own television stations. We could expand cultural care. The same thing we need here in Southeast Queens, same thing Africa needs. Difference is we in these United States are in a position to finance it. And this is why we need to organize ourselves, come together, pull your resources, join an organization. Please, I beg you, join the UNIA. Well, I mean, anybody could say any better. For those out there who are interested in finding out more about the UNIA and the information and things you're doing, is there a website? Is there a number that you can give? Oh, sure. Okay. What has the, before I answer that, let me tell you what the UNI has been doing. We publish twice, uh, we publish six times a year, every two months, the Garvey's Voice. It's the official publication of the UNIA. We, this, uh, in, starting in December, we publish the UNIA calendar. You have to see it. It's mm -hmm. color, it's mm -hmm. beautiful, and it's historical. It was truly, it's truly something to have as a souvenir. Okay, and to reach me, Please, can I give out my number? Uh, Please, you can reach me 24 seven. My name is Raymond Duguay. I'm at your service. I'm the second assistant president general, as well as the high chancellor of the UNIA. You can call me at 718-570-7350. Again, 718-570-7350. Our website is wwwunia hyphen aclgovernment.com. Again, www.unia-hyphen-aclgovernment.com.
UNIA hyphen ACL government.com. You can reach me 24 7. Please join the UNIA. All right. Listen, on behalf of Cultural Cavern, it's always a pleasure to have you on. And we encourage our uh, viewers, if they find out more information, um, to reach out to the UNIA and to reach out to you. And we want to thank you again for the work you're doing in the community. It was my pleasure. And we, I mean, and when I say we, I mean the listeners and the viewers. Please support Cultural Caravan. It provides a service to our community because no one else is going to do it. If we don't do it, how can we grow and prosper? So it's my pleasure to be on your show. Thank you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this broadcast, and we continue to encourage you to tune in, to write, or to tell a friend. But until next time, Louise Dente saying thank you. like to support these broadcasts, we encourage you to send contributions to PO Box 300851, Jamaica, New York, 11430. Thank you.